Hello footies and welcome to Foot in Review. We are the number one independent FC24 podcast bringing you two shows a week. We are available on all podcast platforms around the world, including now on Amazon Music and of course as a fully produced video show on YouTube and Spotify. And of course, if you can spare a few bucks and join our loyalty programs and get some free merchandise as well added, visit patreon.com slash footinreview or footinreview.com and join our super close community and get that invite to our Discord server with that. Today's episode is brought to you by Car Money, but more about them later. And on that note, let's shout out our Patreon Skybox owners. It's time to say a big thank you to Paul C, Amar L, Archum W, Mario A, Simon E, and of course, Peter M. Now let's get this show started. Hello, footies, and welcome back to Food and Review. Today we are recording episode 553. We'll talk about... The missing content, the missing evolutions, my missing tooth, defending an FC24, the foot coaching tips of the week, and what's going on in Edinburgh. Well, stay tuned to find all that out. Also, thank you, Bob Slay Bob, for your send in review on Apple Podcast. My name is John Albio your host today, and today I am joined by the man, the myth, the legend, who has a new nickname today, is none other than our own Norwegian, David Luiz. It is Ingve. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Inve. We spoke about this. It is the fact that you're wearing a cap on every show, but if you would drop the cap, it's very likely you would look exactly as David Luiz is looking currently. Not well, even my words, actually. Yeah, I heard some rumors. Uh, that means that uh, David Luiz is uh, having fun in Brazil, I guess. <laughs> He's a handsome fellow. I was really sure he would say that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be too predictable. So no, I'm not going to say that. Yeah, we've had some comments that we have a slight bit of arrogance over us. So, well, you're saying you look good yourself. Might fit that well. <laughs> but Envy, we are not alone. We are joined by the other Mitty legend. The man who also wears the yeah, well, food and review cap very well. Even on holidays, I saw he's on every single picture he wears hat. I even believe he got married in this hat. It's none other than the man from Edinburgh. It's Chris Grandpapa Mac, the food and review teddy bear. Hi, mate. Yes, I can confirm I had a food and review hat on when I got married, but it was classy. It was black and white. So don't you worry there, folks. Yeah, it's James great. Bond edition. Yeah, exactly, mate. It was great to be on the number one independent FIFA podcast out there. Yeah, you know, we do not cup EA's balls. We tell you how it is. There will be some disagreement on this show tonight, let me tell you that, because if it goes anywhere like our WhatsApp chat, this podcast day will be fire. Yes, well, I don't even know where to talk, where to start today, because you say something about, well, the WhatsApp group has been uh, on fire. Yes, there's been some heated arguments, but not only in our team and not only in the foot coaching team, but also all across this community this week, because normally we have so much discussed content voice on a Friday that we actually planned the show on Friday just after content hit to make sure we can get it all going. We even made a new segment, which is called the Week in Review to talk about all the content people might have missed between the days of a last recording and today's recording. It's a short segment today. And I think let's start with that, though, because, Ingvi, it's been pretty dire, ain't it? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm disappointed. So uh, it's been a disappointing view. Week, week, actually. I can't even speak. I'm so disappointed. I'm sorry. Uh it's been quite boring this week when it comes to content. It's been looking at, uh, yeah, when the clock passed the content o'clock, it's like, what's new? Evolutions, please. No. Every day, pretty much. So uh, let's take that topic for a second because I actually never paid too much attention to evolution so far. People know that, but now I am also very much of the opinion that they're actually cool. But you send me a message, so it's like, hey, in the official release notes, it stated that we would get evolutions every week during the first season. We only got that on the pre-release. That's it, right? Yeah. So that's we two weeks we... now without any news. Yeah. And mm. this is the 
well it was the thing that people were talking the most about uh, like oh this is so cool EA made this and released it and it's it was really fun it's different i can't wait to see new, see new evolutions and uh, yeah we're still here waiting um talk about content itself we've got 83 plus SBCs, but you have to trade in an 82 rated team for one 83 plus card i did two i got two 83s so yeah that was fun um not definitely the word 78 plus upgrades definitely not worth it but we got a lot of packs in store yeah we also got the uh icon player pick loan thing for an 84 rated squad just in time with, for uh, weekend league uh, yeah loan fc and it will get a new member i guess uh for many teams uh which i'm not a big fan of those uh loan things uh in the one is okay but when there's uh, almost a team full of loans then uh, it's a little bit uh yeah tiring i know i can use it myself but uh i don't feel that it makes the game fun doing so because i won't be used to using those players so i would perform worse as well and i don't want to kind of feel Many feel like fear of missing out, use, having to use those loans. They feel that they have to put them in. They actually perform worse because of it. So it's um, and it's expensive. You need an 84 squad with a minimum two players overall of 86 or higher, and uh, also uh, this is minimum two players of uh, 85 as well. So. Uh, it's it's not cheap either for a loan, and I know maybe it's a kind of aimed towards the pros that can use those loans when they play their uh, uh, professional matches. But um, it's it's I would rather have a kind of uh, normal informed player pick uh, <laughs> for eighty four eighty squad than than a loan icon that will expire quite quickly. Yeah. I think it's a it's a weird period, but I might have an explanation for that. But let's jump to Chris first. Chris, what do you think is going on with content? Are you also of the opinion that's just too little going on now? The, I asked a question on Monday, and if people join join our Patreon uh, at Foot and Review, Patreon dot com forward slash Foot and Review. If you join there, you can get to ask a question. And I asked a question last, I think it was last Monday, when Dan and uh, Nath were on, and I said to them. I've got three dupe cards, two Bernardo Silvers, and a Trent Alexander Arnold, two eighty eights and an eighty six. There's nothing for me to do. What would you what would you have me do? I find myself now asking the same question, you know, five days on. And this is the problem that I've got. There, I've got these cards. What do I do at the start of the game? The, 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 the hype for me has died, I'll be honest with you. You know, I was so looking forward to this game. I was buzzing the games coming out. I thought EA is going to blow the doors off it. You know, it's a change of name. Uh, is it FIFA who's holding back EA from doing smart things and bringing the girls in, you know, the female players in, tremendous. That's been a real boost. But then you get these dupe cards and I find my team falling behind. I can't I can't even partake in the, the latest promo, the road to the, the knockouts for the team one because I can't open any packs. The off chance that I may have got something. So for me, it's absolutely killed the hype. Uh, why have they done it? I think, you know, we always go back to the same thing. Is it to sell? We always as players go back to is it to sell FIFA points? You know, you've got a 3,000 point, 3, point car, uh, pack that was out this week. You know, never seen that before. I mean, that is that is a mega thing to come out already in, in week one of the game. I looked again today, there's a 2,000 one there and a 1,000 one there. Again, it's it's funny how we are suspicious and we automatically think it's FIFA points. You may call me a tinfoil hat, but that's what I believe that it is. Well, fair enough. I think uh, definitely something to say about that if you look at how much emphasis there is this week on those packs itself, right? I was wondering though, aren't we just spoiled by the content we got at the end of the year? It's week one of this official release. You might be right, John. You might be right in the fact as I'm looking at it saying... You I'm know, just asking. I'm not even saying I'm on that. No, opinion, no. And I'm to be just... fair, you may, you may be right. We may be looking for the packs out there or players out there, sorry, that are you know high rated and maybe at this point in time an 85 or an 86 will do your team. But they do seem very expensive. As I say, I've got these two, three cards that are pretty high rated, but apart from that, my club is pretty bare. So how do you make that start? How, what do you drop them in and know you can finish off? Um, you know, I think they've been a little bit unfair, EA. The SPCs could have been cheaper and they could have been a little bit stronger. Not necessarily players from uh, big leagues, 
but actually they could have been players in the other smaller leagues. And even tonight's content, I'm sure Ingrid's going to talk about it. It's the same old characters, the same old faces that we're seeing time and time again. And the evolutions were meant to be the factors that you could build these players up. But actually, it's been pretty poor as well for someone like myself who supports Rangers. Would be really interested in taking, you know, starting a game, getting a player, and barely grow them and grow them. But when you look at the one, I think it's the bronze player that you can grow. It's very restrictive, and there is actually no Rangers players that fit the bill for that. Nor final players. I have the same issue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> too good to be in the bronze. Too <laughs> not good enough to have a special card until today. But we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, I just wondering, isn't week one of food content usually pretty dry because it lets people with part the standard standard edition able to catch up a little bit, not to make the gap too big? And isn't the biggest problem now that we actually had seven days early access, over three days early access, which make that feel much the draw be feel much longer than it actually is? Because I I think if we have another week with this amount of content, I agree on everything, right? But I don't remember week one of it actually being full of content now anyways, but it could be me or maybe I'm so focused on gameplay anyways that I don't really miss. I do definitely get what you're saying with uh, duplicates. I think that's just the problem with this duplicate system in period, right? But Because um, I've got dupes as well. I'm like... Yeah, yeah, that sucks. I even have three times the same inform duplicate untradeable, which makes it even harder to do anything with it. But um, it, it, I don't think it's that bad because there's plenty to do in the game itself, I think, though. No. No? I've done all the objectives pretty much, and I I got the eight wins I needed for uh, rivals. I've managed to get the points for doing the... Uh, uh, qualifiers, which I haven't had time to do. Because oh, you didn't you... have time to do any something in game. How dare you? Well, I've done every uh... pretty much. Well, every uh, the foundation species and all the foundations, evolutions, etc., etc. I'm not. Uh, I've not done the uh, expensive species because they were too expensive and wouldn't fit my team and not worth doing for me. So uh, I've done the basic stuff that I pretty much the casual player would would do, I guess, and. Uh, most of the stuff the hardcore players would do as well, uh, moments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the last few days is like, uh, okay, I'll try and play a uh, rivals match to see how the team performs. Oh, okay, disconnected, fun. And then one one opponent quits, fun. Turn off, more fun. Unfortunately, so. Ah, um... uh, I mean, we could talk about the one one and zero zero draws. Will people quit and doesn't count for a win? Oh, well, that's beating a dead horse, I guess, because I think we all agree on that, right? Um, Uh, But I do think, aren't we like, you you covered up all your milestones, and I'm just trying to be at devil's advocate tonight for a little bit, right? Just to show a little light, I'm not saying I agree on it. Uh, But scoring five from goals is a pretty hefty task. But there's people that done it after three days, just playing squad battles, grinding five from goals out. Um, I'm at... 350 or something like that. And I'm like, I could do that, but I don't have the time to just spend all my time in squad battles. I'm grinding rivals really hard. And there's plenty for me to do that's still left in the gameplay or uh, objectives to do because I wasn't purely focused on it. And I think this is what you see, Chris, you play Diablo as well. What you see in other games as well, where some people just go nuts at the objectives and target those objectives and can do those really fast and effective as possible while the more casual player or the player that doesn't focus on it necessarily actually leaves like, oh, I still have a lot of things to do still in this game. If the content actually, you have always been a player that's able to do this as efficient as possible in VA. I mean, uh, and you're very smart about that. Now, probably a lot smarter than, that than I am with any anything in this game, perhaps gameplay related. That's something else to be said, but I... I, I do think it's not actually that bad, and it's just been seven days as we record it as well. So, but I had so many people that uh, that are playing the game. They're saying, "Oh, why is there no content?" And the people that used to be on the uh, EA forums, Discord, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, saying that, "Oh, so boring. There's no content. Nonsense. What are we gonna do?" And, and even friends that uh, I didn't even know playing uh, playing the EAFC at all, like. Uh, 
It's like, wh what are we supposed to do now that uh, there's like everybody, there's nothing to do. It's like, what's happening? Uh, I, most people seem to remember that there was so much more last year when the game started. I am a little bit unsure about that, but it sure feels like uh, it's kind of uh, dry no, waters. I get what you're saying, but let's uh, just facts here. It's seven days in. We got Jimenez SBC. We talk about that in a moment. We got Panini's SBC. Uh, just plucking up players, right? You got Fair, Kubo, Bonifacio, Akpom, Madison. We got the Brown SBC. That's seven. We have the Coquelin SBC. That's eight. We got Silver. That's nine. We got Kudos. That's ten. We got David. That's eleven. There's eleven players SBC in seven days or eight days actually. Is that so bad? I, I mean, think... not that I want to do any of these players except <laughs> Jimenez. That's the, the that's the different issue. But it's not like there's nothing there, right? But but you just said it, John, and in your comment, I'm not going to do these players. No, but my I do think I have a very yeah. But the thing is, uh, elite I, think... <laughs> I have a very different way look at how to do these. Or if a I lot of do people are looking at these players and going, I don't want to do that card. I'm not interested in doing that. No, account. I get and, that. But is that the point that they come back from having 99 rated players and I, look different I, at these cards? Or it's like... No, because I think people people know that you're not going to get a 99 rated Harland. Do you know what I mean? I think people are happy to accept they're not going to get that. But what they're looking for is some excitement. You know what I mean? If you're looking at the David card tonight, you know, it's 100 and... What is it, Ingvi? 100 and odd K or something like that to do? 140K, 150K? I can't remember the top of my head. It's a lot 150. of... 150k is a lot of players to ask people to do. And if you've got the standard edition, you're one week in to the game. Yeah. And you've got David. Let's be honest. How many times did we see David in this game? We had him last year. How many times with his sunglasses on? You know, again, it's the same player. There's, there's teams in there that are doing doing well. And, you know, teams, if you look at the, the Conference League as well, there's a lot of different names in there, a lot of different players you could put in. And why not make the David? Why don't you make the David card 80k? What does it matter? Do you know what I mean? That no, makes it, no big difference to, to, to EA, does it really? I don't agree because if you look at the specific example of David, it could be one of those cards where you could put in all your fodder, where you could grind towards for the next six days if you save the fodder, or if you could grind towards if you play this week. If you look at the cards itself, it's a really good card. High, high, five star weak foot. There's not many strikers having five star weak foot. Male strikers, female more, I think, this year. Um, he's fast, 86, 90, actually. He's got 90 finishing with a five-star weak foot. 92 stamina, it's week two. Mm -hmm. 92 stamina in week two. This is a really good card, honestly. How many, and, how many people do you think are going to use that card? And for how long? I think this might be one of the cards. No, but uh, let me ask you, who's any other, which options are actually better on the market? It all depends. If, if, if you look at Likun, that's just Neymar. Yeah, uh, if you, Mbappé, there, if that's you, it. Yeah, but if, if you don't have a league on card uh, at all, if you you like have maybe one player from mm -hmm. that league, so you need if you're gonna have a good team, you need to buy quite a few players as well. So uh, you have to change around your team. So that's the point as well. Yeah, uh, but I mean, this is this is not a bad card, and it is a card that's not. <laughs> I think 150k for this card isn't all that bad, right? Yeah. And I get that you're saying, yeah, okay, maybe it doesn't fit your team, but he's also able to upgrade. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is a bad card at all. And if you say, like, how many people are going to use it? I don't honestly know, and I get what you're saying. But if this was a Prem card, let's see our friend De Bruyne last week, this card would be three times as expensive, right? And it has to be, because yeah. else you would. this would be the only card you've seen in the game. But this card here, John, so I'm right in saying that if they win two games, the, he gets an upgrade. Am I right in saying yes. that? And then he gets a final upgrade when they qualify. The last one is way too late. I definitely agree. So, you, yeah. so you, you're really looking at one. Let's be honest, you're looking at one. And at the moment, they are second. They drew nil-nil yesterday. And they're in, a, they're in the, a group where they should they should go through. There's, there's two other teams in there they should at least go there. I think Slav, Slava and Bratislava, they're likely there on course to potentially they win play the They'll play Bayes next time, two times in a row, I think. Uh, no, they're in the conference, this team. Oh, David's sorry. team. Yeah, they're in the conference. And they, they play, I think they've got Bratislava back, uh, back to back. Don't know which game's first. So there's a real chance that they'll win two games, I would think. Yes. But it could be the fact is that they win those two games late on. You know, they win, may win one, 
just now and they might have to wait again till the end of the game to then get the game cycle. So you're looking at December time for this card to be yeah. upgraded twice. I'm not saying the card's not great. The card is great. He plays great in game. He's got the body type that probably fits as well. So there's a lot about this card. For me, the card's too expensive. You're something like me who's got dupes. To find an 86 squad, you're asking me to put players that potentially I have in my team because of the dupe situation. And that's, I think, where the hype has been killed for me. If I had SBCs at the start of the week that were more attractive than what they've been given out, I wouldn't have these dupes and I'd have all the packs to open tonight. And then I could go, do you know what? I'm going to put them in the David SBC. I think what they've done is they've missed a trick with the fact is been, it's been so dry this week that it's killed a lot of the hype for people from a content point of view. And what I think is a good point, if if you don't have the father at all, of course you're going to buy the Kolo Muani card for 18K, then go spend 150K on, on a Jonathan David SBC. You get better links as well and a double four-star. High medium work rates, which is better, I think, than the high high that David has as well. And the Colum Rani card is really good. So why would you do the David one then? Unless you're a fan of the club and the player, of course. But, well, I don't uh, think there's a definite difference between 90 plus finishing and 82 finishing on a card. Five-star weak foot over four-star weak foot. I think weak foot is one of the most important things this year, honestly. Um, so, but, like, I agree. But then look at Leao, who's almost the same price as uh, he is. And I think Leao is actually, if you look on paper, finishing is also way worse. Four star, four star as well. Medium low, I'm not sure that's much better. And he's got 77 stamina. I think I'll prefer the David card on stats alone over the Leao card. And Leao card's being eaten on the market. Everyone buy, has that card probably not by now. And he's 130k now, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, and that's also a league that's not very often played with a nationality that's hard to link. So I don't think this is that that bad. But I, I, I'm not saying I don't agree with the fact that you guys want or deserve more SPCs during the week. But I'm also thinking if they overdid it in the first week, if they give out too good, the players that had one week extra to put in their cards to trade up or to have a repeatable SPC or have a good SPC, which is really strong, that would be one of the only players we would have seen. You see how many we face... The De Bruyne card already higher up, right? I think right. every other match I see Kevin De Bruyne now in this four. Right. And that's a really good card, honestly, and I sort of regret not doing him. If they put out a bigger SPC now where people can grind, that would be the one. You remember the days, Envy, where they had the, um, I actually forgot his name, the Portuguese icon early on in FIFA, like week two or something. Everyone used that icon for the first four weeks until the new one came out. I think this is also a situation where you have to be a little bit careful about that. I'm not saying I don't want more, and I definitely agree on the fact that evolutions should be weekly. They said it should be weekly. We should deserve to get them every week, right? And that's a, that's not even a point I'm going to argue about. And I'm definitely not arguing with this about it. I'm trying to shed a little bit of a different light on the content aspect here. Okay, Chris okay. muted himself, but he's definitely having a good conversation with okay. himself as well. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting so so excited there with this conversation. I actually muted it. Um, so you look at the Andre Silva card that came out. So 85 rated striker. Sociedad had a great result midweek. They've got a win. And they've got mm -hmm. probably back-to-back -back games of win again. So he's going to get upgraded to 86. And you, you're maybe right, John. You're maybe right, me looking at that card and going, it's no 99 Harland. It's no a 99 Messi, that card. You know, 81 rip pace. You're thinking to yourself, you know, is it then you look at it, 83 acceleration, 79 sprint speed. You know, maybe that is a wee bit snobbish on my part. Maybe that is good value now, especially with that result midweek. But then you go, you look at it, it's a three-star weak foot. That's yeah. the problem for me. That's what stops me buying the card. Not only does the stats to me look quite low, I look at it and I go, three-star weak foot. I've already got an issue with players missing from the penalty spot when they're middle of the goal <laughs> last night either side or this new post simulator that we've got so that's the issue for me that wiggle, card, wiggle simulator we call it now right, or you know generally you hit the post I've got Lavelle who's 87 rated female player for the uh, USA and she hits the post every single game there should be a trait that she's got post hitter <laughs> but again th three star three, three star weeks through that 
for a player like me, four star skills, I couldn't care less what skills he's got, but the weak foot is key for me, as you say. The David Carr being five is amazing, but that being three star just kills that card for me because even as Tosi Dad won the next game and he goes to an 86, see two promos time, that card's not getting your team. That's the problem for me. I, and I, I agree I, there. Can, can I say something before I sure. forget it? Sorry. Uh, I wouldn't mind the prices on those cards if they would get uh, a skill moves upgrade, a weak foot upgrade, if they kind of uh, got the both uh, upgrades. Because then, of course, you would get a quite unique card. Now it's just a, like an inform upgrade. And uh, if you're really unlucky, he's gonna, he can get two informs and then it's like you spent lots of uh, time and effort and coins, players, and then you could just have bought the player for 25k when it's released uh, the second upgrade as an inform. So uh, they need to make them more unique. I know they can get upgraded, but uh, give them some traits, that play styles, weak foot, uh, skill moves, work rates, something more unique than what it is now. Then, uh, then the prices are okay, but for the prices now, no. Yeah, well, I, I think this is one discussion we we can keep going for a, a long while. Yeah. I do agree on the fact that, like I said, we needed evolution. We didn't get evolutions. I do agree on the silver card. Definitely not worth it, eh? I, I don't agree on the uh, David card. I think that's definitely pretty good value. And I think if you look at that, there's like 50 five-star weak foot cards where most of them are silver, actually, or very low gold rate card, which has no stats in other places. Uh, and you see the other ones being uh, Son over 100k, Putellas being 800k. Uh, we talked about the Brown. Uh, I think we got the Aitana card from Barca, the female center midfielder. Uh, I think she's also 200k plus. Um, Neymar, 300k. I don't think 150 untradeable, which card can that can get 100 and or get one, get 87 rated as well. Comes from 81 rated, isn't that is a bad value? But hey, mm. let us know if you listen to this show if you think that is a good card or not for you, and let us know if you used him because I definitely wanted to see a review from him, um, and I am expecting more content. I think if this is the same into next week, I think we can have a worst discussion like then i'll definitely join your side of the discussion fully right I'm not saying i'm not there but i'm i'm on i'm i'm, mid, I'm stuck in the middle currently <laughs> Infi, if you would rate this week in review what would it be from a one to ten two chris if you would rate this week from one to ten this week what would it be uh three for me and that's only because i managed a good friend of mine managed to sleep an ibrox and I got that in game. So, yeah, the three for the Ibrox. Uh, it'd be minus three for the way we're playing at the moment, but I'm not going to blame that on EA. Uh, yeah, well, that, uh, you can't do much about that, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I won't reduct any any points for the way I'm playing in foot currently, though. So <laughs> else we would have find, ended up giving a minus score in total. Uh, but I would go for a four, and that's only because Jimenez came out today. <laughs> <laughs> and they had we for card last week, which made up a little bit for it. So, no, I, it has to be better, but I do feel it is better. What I do find a little bit annoying, if I can take a little bit more into the weekend review when we're talking about content, uh, the, the draw, the quitting is already on mass once people hit a checkpoint. They don't get anything for it. You can't report it. Still sucks. Still very annoying. I've had the game crash indeed multiple times. I thought it was an Xbox issue. Happens on PlayStation as well. Doesn't really matter. I tried both consoles. It's just so random. Uh, I have no idea what causes it. Um, I've had several times where the intro or the outro still stays on play and I can't really quit the game after the game is actually finished. Um, Ingvi said, let it run for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, like, yeah, I'm probably better off just quitting this and it counts as a loss for me, which is still very annoying. And how come the buttons are still invisible if you take up that wheel on your player? Sometimes the but all the buttons around are invisible, Envy. You've seen that? That's also yeah. very weird. Uh, and last but not least, for some reason, there's uh, like frames, uh, FPS drops. There's a frame drops coming in games. It's nothing to do with lag because it happens in squad battles as well, I think. It's where you suddenly just like, hey, I'm just, it stutters for a little bit. 
and it's definitely not the console it's not the pc version it doesn't matter it's just everywhere and i find it really annoying because when i play on like 10 ms uh, and it's it's just very hard to watch if i'm honest um and i think i would love a digital founder to have a look at this game from what's really going on if you actually measure all the frame rates taking that aside i do have a lot of fun actually playing this game but i'm Almost certain I might be alone in that fact as well this week. I see Ingvi being in the middle and, Ing and Chris um, nodding his head like, yes, sure. Shall we go for <laughs> with Ingvi first let's, and end with negativity, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Ingvi, what is your current feeling with the game? Uh, when it doesn't game play. Yeah, yeah, when it doesn't disconnect, it's not too bad. But That's I, a glowing I, review there, mate. Yeah, but um, uh, when the matches are nice and flowing, I have fun. Because then I can, with the precision passing, helps a lot. I can actually pass where I really want to pass. So that that's a plus. But there's too many disconnects, and uh, then there's matches that start on maybe 16 MS, and when I come in game, it's full traffic light for some reason. And then it's really annoying. Uh then everything goes kind of everywhere where I'm not aiming. Uh, so the game has potential, but uh, I don't know. I've never had this many disconnects in any uh, football game from EA the last f at least five years. It's probably close to what I've had in total for the last five years, which I've checked my connection, reset routers, uh, Wi-Fi. I've tried with cable. I've tried everything. It's the only thing that disconnects in the house, and that's EAFC 24, which is super annoying. And it's usually when I'm up as well uh, in matches, in rivals. Even in squad battles, I've had like four disconnects for some reason. I missed out on elite rewards uh, this last Sunday because I got those disconnects like, just below the points uh, so because of that. So super annoying. Yeah. Definitely. I, I, I get where you come from. Chris, take this moment, take the light, take the spotlight, take the stage, take a bow and go for it. This show is sponsored by Car Money, the car finance ninjas, fighting to make cars affordable and accessible for everyone, no matter your financial situation. Nikki, the car finance ninja here, compares the top car finance lenders in both the UK and Australia to get you the best possible price so you don't have to and they can get you approved fast. All you need to do is choose your new car and drive away happy. Get in touch with one of their friendly ninjas and start your car finance journey today. The game feels incomplete is the honest answer for me. You know, you've got the menu speed, which is either fast or slow. It's never consistent. And then you've got the game itself where defending is not on a level par with attacking. Um, I realise that I'm not the best player out there. I'm your average Joe. And, but there's a lot of average Joes out there as well that pick up this game and want to play it. And at the moment, it's no fun because I understand that if we bought the same game as we bought last year, we'd just say, why are we getting the same game? And EA, maybe I've tried to change it up. But what I'm saying is I don't think it's been tested robustly enough. Um, when you can make the slightest mistake with a defender and then the player goes past. Now, I have Trent Alexander. He's no quick... I know Ingvi's on the on the pod tonight, uh, but he's not the best defender in the world either. But he certainly isn't ba as bad he, as he is in game. You know, when you're up against the speed merchants like Timo Werner and that, the game has moved on too much from an attacking sense and the defenders have not been able to keep up. You know, I've got Virgil van Dijk loan card. I wasn't in Lacroft to pack him, but I did get the loan card, the Nike one. When he's been bodied off the ball, or when he wins a tackle and all of a sudden your um, the attacker turns into a Rottweiler and steals the ball off him before even Virgil van Dijk has a chance to react, that's not a fair game. So the game is very frustrating at the moment. Now, it'll get better, I'm sure, through time as I get better at the game. But uh, And I know I don't really want patches because when they start patching it, they start to dumb it down a little bit. But there definitely is that equilibrium between attack and defence just is non-existent at the moment. Envy, your thoughts on that? Yeah, <laughs> defending, yeah, it's a kind of different chapter than... Uh, uh, I don't mind it being more difficult, but uh, I don't know how many times I can 
try different types of tackle on one player and the ball still bounces back. So that's kind of back. Uh, we had that a lot a few years ago as well. So I've tried with advanced defending, without advanced defending. I tried the, the shoulder thing, uh, uh, shut off thing or shut out or whatever it's called. Uh, only thing that works, if you time it good, that's the slide tackles. And good of course, old fashioned power sliding. Uh, uh, yes. But uh, that's a huge risk. And there's so many penalties for nothing inside the box. Uh, just standing and holding LT and uh, to kind of shield the ball. And I said, like, okay, there's a penalty for something. Uh, so uh, I've conceded so many penalties. I don't know. have no clue why. So that's super annoying as well. So the first patch is going to be interesting. I'm pretty sure we're going to complain a lot. Uh, would be really surprised if we don't. Because... Uh, Things are going to get broken. We know that from previous year, unfortunately. So uh, uh, I hope things will get better, but I still think it's going to take maybe three, four months, unfortunately. I, I find it a little bit hard to make a um, total statement. I get that people feel this way, and I do feel this way. I'm far worse in defending than I've ever was. I think defending was one of my strong points in any other FIFA game before here, right? This year, I actually have to really work for it. I am sometimes bummed out that I can't get uh, stop things, which I can see come in. And I do agree on the bounce back balls. Those are just plain annoying. I do think that if I time a manual tackle correctly, it's one of the best things ever in, a, in an FC game. Like a manual tackle that actually hits or a sliding tackle that gets you perfect when you have to a play style and actually go in between it. You take the ball just beneath his feet. It's like a perfect feeling. And that is unprecedented ever before because that's, they used to be automatic things defending. And now when you do pull it off, it's like, ah, that felt awesome. I was a re you can, I can cheer making a good tackle now. I think that's the, dif that's the difference. I do agree as well that I think there's a lot more fast and good strikers, even though the weak foot is usually not that good, then there are good and strong defenders. And I do think that play styles make a lot of difference. I got Konate and Virgil van Dijk. Konate is non-existent next to Virgil. But his stats aren't actually that much worse. But the play style make a huge difference on players, right? So I think if we get some SBCs, if we can get some more players with a little bit more play styles instead of... Inst and you can get those players into your team in the coming two weeks. I think the difference will already become a little bit uh, smaller. I also feel that this is a game where people will try different things. What works gets picked up a lot. I mean, we see it at our socials. We say one thing, suddenly we have a lot of messages. How do you do this thing? And the next week, everyone that sends messages, oh, this really works. So a lot of people play, playing like the same style that goes from every influencer or from every channel. Uh, so last week, we didn't see any crosses. This week, we see a lot of crosses. We see a lot of players being on the wings, putting different play styles, crossing the balls in, right? And you have to adapt to, hey, maybe I need aerial defenders to actually be able to head those balls away. Uh, so like Van Dijk, for example. So I think there's a lot of this meta shifting and trial and error while the defenders need to play catch up a little bit stats-wise or play style-wise. And I might be underestimated because here's my biggest complaint I've had with the way they introduce a game. Always, actually, is that they do a closed beta, which is played by mostly pro players, a couple of content creators. Then you go into a, a here's the game, but you finish that closed beta using the top of the top players who have all those stats and all those things in places. Then you start a new game where you're like, hey, a Timo Werner or a Lewandowski or a Juan Pedro in this situation. People get those cards in, or like a Morgan, five-star week for example, get those cards in against defenders that aren't on par there. And you have to learn the new, te the new mechanics as well. Well, and being that it's a lot easier to hold R1, try to wiggle around someone and take a shot than it is to actually hold L2 or bow triggers and time the tackle perfectly, I think that's what currently makes a lot of difference. I do feel that if they patch it too early, they might actually just break it before the players and us, the actual players having the controller, might be able to figure it all out and, and catch up on this. 
So I don't think the critics are uh, undeserving. Let's put it like that. But I do think it's also a natural cause of the state the game currently is in. And if this was the same way we defended last year, it actually wouldn't be a problem because people wouldn't know how to do it. The mechanics change. Defenders are worse than, than uh, generally worse than the attackers are, and it's generally a little bit easier to attack than it is to defend. I think it will be able. People will be able to catch up. There's a lot of players not using the advanced defending. There's players not any, not knowing how the partial team press work, works, which actually works really good. I explained the hard tackle, the power tackle this afternoon, a couple of times to people like, I didn't even know that was a thing. And I think that's the biggest issue. There's no way in game where they actually explain to you all these new mechanics properly. Mm -hmm. And if they would do that, and I mean, for me, it's good, right? At least we, we can make a book out of it now, but I think it should be in game to teach you how to do it. I think if the players catch up and I think if the meta sort of the meta sort of settles, it'd be a lot easier for everyone. Because you also see like 10 different formations. If you play 20 matches, it's not always the same formation either. After the first season of tournaments is done, like uh, the pro divisions now started, you'll see things settle down into a steady rhythm. Same plays being used. People know which play style works. SVCs come in, which have play styles, which might be able to finish up some teams. And people just figure out how it actually works and stay a little bit calm with that. But I think most of the things that are happening now is a natural cause. And I think it has something to do with expectations. You expect to be on the same level as you finished up last season. We've had three years or two years of the same game. This game is way different. And still I'm like, hey, I'm just division, like I'm now division four. Hey, I didn't make, I, I, I didn't, I went seven, three, I think in uh, qualifying. I'm like, I'm actually a little bit disappointed. Normally I do better. doesn't matter. I qualified and it's actually a new game. So you're a little bit, you, your reflection to the other results and the way the other games feel, I think is also a bit of part of this. If that makes sense, Chris. It does. It does. And, and you know, first of all, John, where do people go and find the video of the hard tackle? Is it on our TikToks? Uh, we'll be on our TikToks in the coming yes. weeks. Yeah. So TikTok, is it Foot Coaching TikTok looking for that? Yeah, Foot Coaching official uh, TikTok and Foot Coaching on Instagram. Yeah, so there you go, folks. There's where you go and find the hard tackles there, courtesy of Foot Coaching for free. If you do go and have a look, do us a favour. Please leave us a five-star review. We really would love that as well as a thank you for joining and the guys for doing such hard work. I was going to say, John, look, it's hard to disagree too much with you because you're a really good player. But what I would say is... I used uh, to be. No, no, you are. Came you are. We'll, we'll, we'll find out next week as well when you, after a few beers what you're like uh, face to face. Um, <laughs> but when I look at the team that's come out, the two teams that have come out the road to knockout, you know, you've got 92 rated Harland there, 90 rated striker Ozeman. You've got some really fast players, 90-rated uh, Bruno Fernandes for week one. This week, you know, there's some standouts. 92, Lewandowski may not be the quickest, but let's be honest, he's going to be great in game. 91, Modric. I'm not trying to steal your thunder hearing, but there is a point to this. Uh, I'm not trying to be the content. When you look at the centre-backs, the centre-backs do not match these cards that are coming exactly, out. Exactly, yeah. You've got an 88, Benucci, who plays for Union Berlin at the moment. They're having a bit of shock at the moment. They don't play at home. They have to play their, their home games away at a different stadium as well. And then the Kalulu card as well, if I look at that, I can pull it up really quickly as I, I make my rant. You know, he's 150K. He's probably out of a lot of people's reach. So from my point of view... you got Del Marty this week as well. Yeah. But I mean, he's he Inter Milan. He's... Uh, let me just quickly get, pull him up. There we go. He's extinct at the moment. It looks like there, so that might be an issue. Who, who is extinct? Darmian. No, he's an objective, actually. He's an objective. So there you go. That's it. But if you look at his pace, John, and this is my complaint about the defenders, is the de defenders are too slow. His pace is uh, 75 acceleration and 80 sprint speed. Your evolution is... 68 strength on the centre-back. I mean, all my point is, is that, that these cards are uber strong, the attackers, against extremely weak defenders and it's and with the advanced defending and the, the tactical and the legacy all the different type of defending styles people are struggling to get themselves into the game and my worry is that the casual player the average joe is going to look at this game and go nah i'm done i'm away playing something else do you know what i mean and that's my concern because i think there's a good game in there 
But I think what happened is A have went too far. What they've been better doing is pulling it back a bit and slowly but surely increase it as the defenders got better. No started at this high point. Instead of putting this high point and dragging it down, start low and make your way up the hill. Yeah, also there's a lot of insane good teams running around. I think I played Zico and Ronaldo a couple of times already. I'm like, yeah, I didn't expect that to happen in week one or two. <laughs> yeah, but so, that's, that's what happens when you come up against Nice team all the time, isn't it? Uh, that's also true. We also packed Modric today in a preview pack, but hey, let's not talk about that. Um, <laughs> I think we all agree defenders need to be a little need to be catchy and I, I get what you're saying eh? the frustration of not being able to feel like you can defend properly as well uh, I think the players itself has definitely something to do with it the difference between the strikers and the defenders but I also don't want them to change the mechanics currently because I don't think there's much wrong with the mechanics if you feel on par with the opposition actually so hmm Interesting point. We'll figure that out in the next week or so, how that comes. Uh, but the uh, hint is going to give us more defenders, EA. Ingvi. Yes. Crystal, all your thunder, but you can take that as that objective player if you want. Hooray. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got a road to the knockout uh, objectives uh, to unlock the card. It's not difficult at all. Uh, you need to assist five goals in squad battles on semi-pro or higher, of course, or in rivals and uh, for champs using Italian player can be done in one match. And uh, you also have fancy finish score eight goals using a player with the minimum 80 dribbling easy to do. Uh, defensive pros uh, concede one or less goals per match in four separate matches in squad battles or in rivals and champs. You can do them in squad battles, shorter time, which is really good. I really like that. Uh, shorter half in squad battles, perfect for these type these things. And the, probably the last one is top performance. We win twelve matches in squad battles or in rivals and for champs while having minimum three Serie A players in the starting. 11 so that's more than doable uh, you can combine it with uh, with the rivals and squad battles and foot champs if you don't have three good serial players you do everything in uh, in squad battles and it's, it's quick and not as painful as before which I really appreciate so for a free card it's it's, it's not bad at all but uh, of course it's not gonna save uh, save your team uh, from considering lots of goals no, not yet. But uh, honestly, this is not too bad. No, it's a decent card. Um, he needs. Uh, he's so he's very weak though, so he would need need an anchor uh, game style, I think. At least. Yeah, I want to yeah. just one little bit about these players again. Something people tend to forget this year, I think, is the acceleration. Not the acceleration stat, but the acceleration type players have. Because now this year it's five different ones in there. I'm saying that. I'd be incorrect. I'd be Some, something like that. I think it was five. Uh, mostly explosive, uh, controlled, explosive, controlled. That, that close. It does actually make a difference, especially on defenders. I do think defenders that are lengthy, not mostly lengthy, but lengthy, actually catch up way easier than other defenders. So just that's one little tip I'm just going to throw out there. True. But hey. That helps, of course. Chris has a cap, but he also has a tinfoil hat, Chris. He's on mute again. He's so good at muting himself and then making statements. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me now, guys? Sorry, that is my that is the X Files there. That is the tinfoil hat detector coming on. John uh, mutes me when I go for tinfoil hat. He never believes me. I do know DDA is real out. Trust me, folks. But let me just say, we've all been waiting <laughs> for La Liga Player of the Month. Let's be honest. La Liga, who is sponsored at the moment by EA. They're the title sponsors for this year of La Liga. And we looked at it and we got all excited. Look at those nominees. There was Lewandowski there. There was Bellingham there. There was even Anaki Williams. There was this Kubo who's always been no too bad. 
and then a player called Savio, Savio. And we all thought, it has to be the English Zidane. Let's be honest. The guy is on fire. He is taking a Real Madrid team that's struggling and he is playing out of his skin. If you've seen him play against Napoli this week, I mean, what a player. It's disappointing for a Scottish point of view because that guy could drive England on to win some major honours. He is that good a player. And we all were like, he's going to be, it's going to be Bellingham. The fans get to vote. Has to be him. Who's no going to vote for Bellingham, Real Madrid? The only people who don't vote for Real Madrid players is Barcelona players, and they might vote for Lewandowski. So we could get him. Nope. What do we get? We got Kubo. 85 rated Kubo came out. Head scratcher, that one. No, no, don't worry about it, guys. Bellingham is in Team of the Week this week, and Lewandowski's in this week's promo. Mm, let us think about that now. If Bellingham had won... <laughs> Would he have been in Team of the Week? No. He'd have been an SBC. If Lewandowski had won, would he have been a player that was out this Friday? Certainly wouldn't have been. So what are we left with, guys? We are left with 85-rated Kubo, which is a good-looking card, let's be honest. But he has no Bellingham, that's for sure. And underneath that is Lewandowski. So if you believe me, guys, and let's be honest, I'm sure John doesn't, <laughs> but if you believe me, hit us up on our socials and put hashtag great show and underneath that hashtag tinfoil hat. <laughs> I'm not even disagreeing here. <laughs> <laughs> no, and uh, I can. But I do think in the Dutch league division they they vote honest. Yeah, that's different. But I I need to say one thing first. Uh, we got a player of the month for uh, August for Bundesliga and Premier League, correct? Those yeah. yes. And Bellingham, he was voted officially the. August player of the month in La Liga, but why wasn't he released as an SPC? Why, did, why, why, why did we have to wait for Kubo now? Even <laughs> why couldn't they just release all of them for August as well? Yeah, makes I mean, no that's... sense. No, it doesn't. So, as I say, guys, if you believe us, Engve and I <laughs> hit us up on our socials Look and me us. as well because we would have had two Jimenez cards by then. Exactly, you've got so hit us up on Instagram. TikTok, X, YouTube, hashtag great show, hashtag tinfoil hat. Awesome. Let's get that going. Oh, guys, guys, there's so much to discuss, so much to discuss. Um, we, uh, we're already a long time in, so we can't discuss too much. I want to discuss a couple of tips, of course, is for coaching tip of the week. Um, but uh, because we could like, just start, I'm going to give you guys some general tips for uh, the weekly league, actually. Uh, and I think this sounds very easy, sounds very on the nose, perhaps even, but it is so important to do this if you're able to. And so a couple of things. I think um, this year, especially breaking the back line is, especially because of the difference between defenders and strikers, uh, a very hard thing to recover from. So make sure your back four, for example, is always in line. If you keep your depth, on 44, they will not step out that easy. The AI currently, just putting that there. If you put on 71, they will step out very easily, but you'll be having the ball might uh, be a little bit more press. So for now, I would actually say, if you have a good defenders and you have a good feeling for this game, put it on 71. It might feel a little bit like cheating, even if you're, if you're good at it. And if you are having trouble defending those two balls, put it on 44 and keep the back line in tech. Losing the ball in your own half, the coaching sessions we did this week shown that there's a lot of players conceding goals. I think almost 40% of what we've done now of the goals conceded come from losing the ball first on your own half. So not losing the ball in your own half makes a massive difference already because players are running up, especially in the instructions and these gaps, especially with players that can now manual pass a lot better, will be able to exploit it easier as well. But don't lose the ball in your own half. Uh, using the sprint button, you're actually better off using the R1 button and then sprint to get out of it than using the sprint button too much. Goes without saying, but it is something we still see uh, very much. Being predictable, if your seventh cross still gets intercepted by their goalkeeper, do something else. And Ingvi's laughing, but you should have seen the matches we've seen this week where people just keep, oh, true ball, let's try another true ball, let's try another true ball. It should happen anytime soon, but meanwhile, you just get countered. So, being predictable, also on the list. And last but not least, and also very on the nose, so common knowledge, but I still see people do it, is play too many matches in a row. You can't, 
especially when you're not up to par with the game yet. And even I can't, like, I even, that sounds arrogant, I know, but I, I have the same issue now. If I lose two matches in a row, even I'm like, I want to win. Let's go with the new one. But I'm like, I should actually take a breather before I start the next one. Like, take a minute to feel how focused, how fresh you are sitting before you take the next one. So don't play all your matches in one sitting. And if you don't have time to do it all, at least take like a minute or so between matches to cool down. Because any, especially this stage, if you're frustrated, you'll start your next match 10% less focused or 10% less calm. And that will count if you play 20 matches. That out of the way, next Friday, we won't be able to record a show, Chris. Nope. Nope. Because what's going on in Edinburgh? There's no internet, it sounds like. (laughs) (laughs) Another person that slags Edinburgh internet. My goodness. We are going to have... I I love Edinburgh. (laughs) I love it. I've been there just just a few months ago. So, yeah, it's a great place. (laughs) Yeah, it's a beautiful city with no internet, unfortunately. John is going to visit us on Friday. He's coming over to have his uh, week, yearly sorry, uh, FIFA lesson from myself. Um, we sit with, uh, <laughs> you know, you guys all think that foot coaching is poor with him. Let me tell you something. He comes here and he gets a few lessons on the old uh, the old game. Yeah, we're going to have a meet up on Friday. We're going to meet John's flying over, we're going to pick him up. And then on Saturday, we're going to watch Naif's team, aren't we? In Perth, we're going to take him to the lovely city of Perth. And then on Sunday, we're going to have a meet up uh, at the Boom Bar, hopefully they're listening. So free drinks all around from those guys. John's going to show us his. We we're going to play darts, but Dutch people take it too serious. Uh, John says he had to have his walkout music and a load of fans here. <laughs> uh, I'm so bringing my dart shirt. You're bringing his dart shirt. <laughs> his MVG. Uh, no, so yeah. we're, going to, we're going to play pool and shuffleboard and uh, go for a lovely meal at barbecues as well. So. Uh, really looking forward to it. It's going to be a great event. It's a great community, a great bunch of guys. We're going to have a real laugh. And uh, when John leaves on Monday, he's going to go back a better FIFA player. <laughs> At least a better a dart player as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure my my bag's filled with wins when I go back. But <laughs> if you are the boom bar this Sunday, next Sunday, I should say, yes, uh-huh. Sunday the 15th, uh, then yes. say hi. Let's say, uh, say hi to us. Yep. We'll be wearing uh, probably foot coaching kits or anything. You, you recognize us. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm actually the, the one that probably singing out the loudest with the amount of beer you guys drink before it's even noon. But hey. <laughs> <laughs> How about your breakfast, John? And you're also going to partake in a Scottish Big Mac, aren't you, as well? <laughs> well, I have to confirm that, yeah, though. You know? Yeah, he's going to have, um, a, he's going to have a pie with a, on a roll of bread. That's what we call a Scottish Big Mac. So he's going to have one of them for his breakfast. Don't worry, John, it soaks up the beer really well. So you'll be fine come Sunday. Yeah, no matter though. We will do a show next week. Uh, just looking at who's hosting. Maybe we'll record on a Thursday and put that one out, um, and which won't have the Friday content. But then again, you can listen to us every Saturday and every Tuesday. And of course, what we will be doing is we'll be making a lot of content while we're there. So filming a lot, doing some interviews, maybe uh, give a little bit of an impression how these meetups goes, because we will do another meetup in Crete this year as well. So and Next year? Next year, 24, May 24. Uh, when, so it gives you a little bit of an impression. And check out the socials. I've said it a couple of times already during the shows. But we also are putting out a lot of stories, snippets, uh, pictures. Uh, we're going to do some group photos as well everyone that's at the meetup so i know aaron's going to be there i think nate's going to be there ryan's going to be there chris of course is going to be there john's going to be there caden's going to be there. there's a lot of people already saying they're coming so join the fun meet us at the boom bar uh, and say hi you, you have and to be a out. discord member i hasten to add that if you want to come and join the fish meal but if you're in the boom bar please Just come say and hi, say yeah. hello <laughs> yeah we'd love to speak to you love to chat with you if there's anything you want to say about the show you know come and tell us what's good about it the tinfoil hat stuff much as much you love that <laughs> yeah perfect thank you so much chris i'm already thinking should, should we actually let this one pass but hey <laughs> let's go guys at least on a friday night you'll be listening on this on a saturday night if you want to listen to this on a friday night yourself you can tune in live if you are a patreon member patreon.com forward slash foot in review again thank you so much for everyone joining this week there's a lot of new fans on board the community is growing every week and of course thank you so much for dropping those five-star reviews on apple and spotify it is very much appreciated 
And yes, if you give us feedback, we actually do take it seriously. I know we started off with a joke, but it is very much appreciated that you're leaving a review. And of course, that leaves us with just one thing left for us to do. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. F U C. F U C. F F F F U C. F U C. T T. In the view. F U C.